will be. Well, uh, I think the whole, the whole weekend's been a special moment, really, hasn't it? Uh, I was thinking when I was um, uh, listening to that player, and wasn't it actually splendid? Really a super tour de force of the history of the college. I think we should give them one more round of applause. Thank you. thinking when I was what, uh, what watching it and listening to the words, I thought, you know, there are quite a lot of institutions around the world, some nearer, some farer, and uh, you, you would think uh, when you looked at their operation, you'd think their first principle of operating would be uh, something like, you know, never do anything for the first time. And, uh, and Girton has never been like that, and, uh, and I don't think it ever will be. But one of the really fantastic things about uh, that 150th and uh, just having a, a look back to our foundation, is that you really can understand why it has always been an institution that tries to do things for the first time. And I think that's a really fantastic quality, and it's really come out this weekend. Uh, but we owe our predecessors so much in getting that principle onto the table. And as we heard on Friday uh, evening when we had a little preview uh, of the plaque that we're going to unveil very shortly. We had a little preview of it, and we said, you know, sometimes these important truths have to be written in stone, have to be remembered in a really physical way. So it's going to be really tremendous today to be able to unveil a blue plaque to, uh, to, to commemorate the work of our remarkable founders, Emily Davis, also Barbara Bodichon. We've heard a bit less about her over this weekend, but she was a major figure in the history of the college, much more flamboyant, I think, uh, than Emily Davis. A great partnership, um, and uh, we did celebrate something of her life last year. So I think that uh, to be able to receive a blue plaque, which we will be able to do shortly, and unveil it, and actually um, put it on the wall of the tower, which is where it's going to be, so that everyone can see that these remarkable, pioneering women women set the pace for us and uh, I think, I hope, uh, made the institution into the pioneering uh, college that it's going to be into the future. I think that is just such an important and wonderful thing to be doing on this weekend. So uh, in, a, in a few minutes, um, our visitor, who I'm absolutely delighted to know has been here all weekend, she's been presiding over the weekend and supporting the college as she always does, our visitor is going to say some words and, and unveil our plaque for us. Uh, but just before that, I'd like to um, introduce James Littlewood, who is the CEO of... Um, K oh, I forgot what it is. <laughs> I wanted to say plaques. He's actually the CEO of Cambridge, past, present and future. And uh, he's going to say a, little, a, a, a few words about this, about this project. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the Cambridge Blue Plaque Scheme was established in 2001 and it aims to commemorate people and events that have made a significant impact on our area, on the UK or indeed the world. Uh, the scheme is run by a local charity, Cambridge Past, Present and Future. So all blue plaques start with a nomination. In 2018, we were very pleased to receive a nomination from the college asking or proposing a plaque for the founding of the college and the founders and they hope that this might be able to coincide with their 150th anniversary. Now, up until now, that nomination might have proved a bit difficult for us, uh, because the college is actually located outside of the city of Cambridge, in South Cambridgeshire. However, as luck would have it, uh, we were in the process of expanding the scheme into South Cambridgeshire District Council. Um, so the Blue Plaque Committee was very pleased to be able to approve that nomination, um, which in a pioneering spirit is now also the first for South Cambridgeshire District Council. Uh, so I feel very, very appropriate to do that. Um, the plaque itself is actually uh, a different design for the plaque from the city, so it has the colours and the crest of South Cambridgeshire District Council. We think it looks very smart when you see it in a moment, I hope you'll agree, and we hope it does justice to those people and events that it commemorates. So. Bringing a blue plaque to fruition uh, takes a lot more work than you might imagine. Uh, so I'd especially like to thank Councillor Tom Bygott uh, and Penny Heath from the Blue Plaques Committee who've been driving force behind this, and also from Susie Bromwich at the college and the college itself for helping uh, to pay for the plaque. 
So finally, just to say that all the blue plaques have a biography on the blue plaque website, which we run, uh, and we'll be adding a biography for this plaque in due course, but do look, do look that up and look at all the other 30-odd plaques that are for Cambridge. Thank you. Well, those of you who's been here this weekend, most of this weekend, haven't we had a wonderful time? Yeah. Hasn't it been terrific? And we are here at the moment to unveil, for the second time, the blue plaque to my right here. Uh, and around the college, of course, there have been plaques um, enclosed in a bicycle inner tubes, I think, uh, to represent the bicycles that are so important to uh, Gertonians. Uh, and uh, so I thought to myself, well, what would my blue plaque say? What would my plaque say? Well, the first thing they would say is equality. This college is all about equality. And we were learning just earlier this afternoon uh, that Emily Davis's view was that once women got degrees, then the college should be open to men. So, of course, we're celebrating 40 years since men have been members of the college. What about that, for a first and for equality? Brilliant. Yeah. The second thing on my plaque would be ambition. Because I came up to Cambridge uh, rather a long time ago, 1963 in fact, with no higher ambition than to go back to North Yorkshire and be a small town country solicitor. But then I got to Cambridge and I found that there were actually quite a lot of people here who weren't quite as competent as I was. <laughs> they were, of course, all men. <laughs> so it gave me the idea that I might try and do something a little bit different with my life. I just wasn't quite entirely sure what it would be, but it wouldn't be a small town solicitor in North Yorkshire. Uh, and I think I succeeded in that. So there we are. <laughs> So that's number two. Number three is learning, which is both a verb and a noun for you grammarians. Um, uh, learning, I learnt to learn. Learning, I acquired some learning. And I love that phrase about don't be afraid to be learned. Because, of course, so many women used to be afraid to be learned because they thought it might put the men off. It doesn't anymore, does it? No. No. Well, none of the right ones, anyway. <laughs> and we don't mind about the wrong ones. But the fourth word would be in my plaque would be fun. We haven't said a lot about fun this weekend, but I had a bundle of fun at Cambridge, and I bet everybody else here, too, did. Uh, and we've had a bundle of fun this weekend as well. So I think those four words actually sum up what Girton is all about. But we're particularly grateful to the Society and to South Cambridgeshire Council, so we're delighted to see the Chairman and other members of the Council here, uh, to, for the privilege of having the first blue plaque to put on the tower. I hope low enough down that people can read it, because the writing's rather small for the sort of challenge like me. Um, but anyway, I am now proudly going to unveil with grateful thanks to those who have arranged and funded it and to the council that has approved it uh, for allowing us to have this wonderful plaque. So there we are. Yay! I should read out what it says. It says, Girton College, established in 1869 as Britain's first residential institution for the higher education of women. Principal founders, Emily Davis, Barbara Lee Smith Beaudichon, relocated from Hitchin in 1873. So there we are, wonderful, thank you all. Thank you all very much. Now, the, um, uh, the afternoon is yet young, I think is the phrase. Um, now, uh, we have to do a sort of logistical operation now, I think, don't we? I'm, uh, looking at, uh, I'm looking at Deborah, who's in charge. And I think the plan now is to um, have a, a cake 
Uh, but I think the only way you can get the cake is to proceed back to the Emily Davis marquee. So in an orderly fashion, it, it, it is a very big cake. It's in an orderly fashion, if you proceed back to the Emily Davis marquee, we'll have some cake and I would just like to hold, hold, and I would just like to say a few things when we get back there. So Emily Davis marquee for the most enormous cake you've ever seen. <laughs>